<laughs> it is now. Okay, now you guys are all on record. So anybody want to um, tell me anything this week that was important? Anything? You want to tell us? I mean, tell me, tell us. What do you think? Anybody? Nothing? Well, I lost my phone. You guys all know that, right? Yeah. I lost my phone. And then I found it. <laughs> I found it. Yeah. Way too late. Way too late. I guess the only lesson for me here is the universe pretty much tells me when I need stuff. I just find it. Say it again, please. Where was it? It was in the floor of my uh, my black phone was on the floor of my black Lexus on the black uh, carpet with a black <laughs> with a black camera bag on top of it and a black uh, long bag for the foil reflector for the front window just this black on black on black and it, it, I never heard the sound everybody else has heard this so okay we're gonna have we're gonna go right to a safety meeting and we're gonna go to where do I gotta go here okay uh, uh, uh. Oh, this thing's supposed to go away. Hide floating meeting controls. All right. What was it? What were we doing? Safety, right? Yep. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do a tailgate safety meeting. You guys have to bear with me. I've had a busy, weird day. I, I checked people in today. Into. Um, our house, we have a VRBO, a homestay at our house. <clears throat> it's always stressful. Okay, where are we? Week seven. Cruise control driving, one of my favorite topics ever. <laughs> Not. Anyway, here we go. You guys, can you guys all see that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll read the title and the first paragraph. <clears throat> cruise control driving. Cruise control can be can be used to automatically control the speed in your vehicle, usually over 25 to 35 miles per hour, without keeping your foot on the accelerator. It's a great tool to prevent driver fatigue, speeding, and help with fuel economy during long trips on flat, straight roads and highways. Cruise control can cause accidents if you use it improperly or in hazardous road conditions such as city streets, heavy traffic, hills, winding roads, and wet, slippery roads. So... Next, um, Alec. Uh, controlling the speed of your car with your fingertips on cruise control lets you take your foot off the accelerator and rest. But remember, you still control the vehicle steering and braking. Stay alert when you drive. Fatigue and a false sense of security can lead to a lack of attention in an accident. Keep your brain engaged in your driving. Scan the road ahead for traffic, obstacles, and changing road conditions. Read your vehicle's uh, owner's manual on safely operating the cruise control for your vehicle. Read manufacturer's warnings about cruise control use. Leave the cruise control button off unless you intend to use it. If you accidentally activate cruise control, it could startle you into losing control of the vehicle. Okay, um, somebody else, John. Set your cruise control speed at a legal safe speed for the road and the current driving conditions. Always wear your seat belt. During the cruise control, your foot may take a rest from the accelerator, but keep both feet flat on the driver's side floor and ready for braking or maneuvering. If you need to suddenly slow or emergency stop, don't lounge, curl your foot up underneath you or put it up on the dashboard, windsill, window sill, et cetera, when you drive. Excellent advice, Michael Silva. You there, Mike? Michael Silva? Yeah, sorry, I closed down my or like all the people, like the camera position. So I was trying to figure out how to get it back. But anyways, don't use your cruise control when the road is wet and slippery due to heavy rain, hail, snow, ice, or other conditions. Your wheels begin to skid, and you don't step on the brake to stop. The continued acceleration can cause you to overdrive the road conditions and lose wheel traction and control of your vehicle. If you do step on the brake 
to stop, slow, or even turn off cruise control. The change in tire speed can also cause wheels to slip, lose traction, skid out of control. If there is heavy rainfall, water puddles, and slippery road surface, hydroplaning and serious accidents can occur. Um, Art? Note that vehicles equipped with electronic stability control can, after the wheel speed for oh, after, alter, alter, sorry, screen's a little fuzzy, alter the speed, alter the wheel speed for better traction, but read the owner's manual to see if cruise control is safe in slippery road conditions. Take us all away. Cruise control on hills and winding roads can be hazardous. On hills, it is best to manually control your speed using the accelerator and brake. Cruise control may not accelerate your vehicle properly up a hill, making you a slow moving hazard. A steep downhill grade can cause your vehicle to speed up faster than the cruise control setting and safe road speeds. Watch your speedometer and manually accelerate and brake as needed. On twisting and winding roads, brake and accelerate into and out of the turns. With cruise control on, you could approach a turn at an unsafe speed and lose control. Using cruise control in traffic and on city streets with lights and stop signs can be tedious, frustrating, and unsafe. In these situations, you need to reset your cruise control each time you brake, and it is unlikely you would be driving at the minimum speeds needed for cruise control. It is best to manually control your vehicle in traffic and city streets and leave cruise control for long journeys on dry, straight, and wide open highways. Okay, that's kind of a bunch of duh, right? A bunch of no greater duh stuff. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, don't use your cruise control. I mean, and what does cruise control have to do with construction and finished carpentry? Really, everybody's got to get there somehow, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, just another safety thing, just to be yeah. aware of where you are and where everything else is in your life. And cruise control is great for highways. Although I did lease uh, a brand new 2008 Infiniti G35S and paddle shifters and it was just a screaming car and it also had smart cruise control so i could set it for 50 100 or 200 foot interval and it would keep that interval with the car in front of me and it would just uh, adjust its speed so that's probably pretty um pretty rudimentary these days because we do have autonomous cars and they're definitely definitely going to come everybody knows anybody have any uh doubts about that because they're they're gonna come and they're they're gonna come they're gonna get them out there they're gonna hopefully make them safe safer than they are now let's hope okay so any any comments on this any questions comments on uh on any of that on the safety meeting okay then let's go right to uh, mod to week seven which is the week before. So we did a roll call. We did a safety meeting about cruise control and we're going to do mid, mid exam, midterm exam prep, but we're going to do it after we see the videos. They're not super long. There's uh, actually seven of them starting with, and so just as an intro, um, most of you haven't been here, right? Haven't been to the Wake Center, uh, at least not for this, not since March. And some of you, have, are there some of you out there that haven't been here at all to the Wake Center? I can't see everybody. So I'm assuming there are some people that haven't. So this is, this is a little tour of my um, fifth wheel and the grounds and some that would take inside. So the finish work and the, the trailer and uh, some of the finish work I've done and the finish work that was uh, done on the coach in Indiana. And then some of the plumbing stuff, some of the um, mechanical and plumbing stuff, just minorly, just to give you just a glimpse of it. And then, and then I'll walk you through the tiny house, which is, there's a lot going on there. And it's in a pretty rough stage, you'll see. Okay, so here we go. Without further ado, and if you, uh, if you see something that you want to st stop me, just shout out, you know, or put a hand up or something. I think that might be that um, option for you. But um, and I'll, I'll try to stop and narrate, or I might stop myself and narrate, but here we go. Okay, I believe we're recording. We should be recording. I don't have an external mic on yet. And I will probably uh, mic up a bit, but behind me is my fifth wheel trailer, my 2015 winter wheel trailer. I'm riding 1100cc 114 structure. Um, and as 
next to it is the tiny house. I'm going to pan that, and then I'm going to take you into the both of them. So this is the trailer. Oh, by the way, for those of you students of mine that haven't been to the Wake Center, this is what the uh, east end of our parking lot looks like. There's some of our outbuildings that we've built. Storage sheds, there's our classroom. There's my killer, relatively new ride. And we'll pan all the way around. Where's my dog? Rocky! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this off the tripod. Well, we're recording, are we? Yeah, we're recording. Okay, Rocky! Come here, boy. Sorry, guys. Rock. Sorry. <laughs> Rocky, go. Rock. All right, I'm gonna shut. I gotta shut down for just a second and get the dog out. Okay. Okay. And then I'll open up the trailer and we'll come in. <laughs> uh, what an idiot. Okay. What's the next one? Let's see. Let's get out of that. And then we'll go back. Yeah, tiny house too was nothing at all. Okay, I'm back filming. I had to go get my truck because my batteries are somehow low. I can't figure it out, but I just thought I'd give you a little pan of the shop and the outbuildings we built for storage and lumber racks and tool storage and our two-story small house back here, which maybe I'll give you a tour of. And we are definitely going to go inside the tiny home. Take a look at it. It's semi abandoned, not really. But um, then there's my trailer with uh, the sun side showing that some of the decals are wearing. I had to go get my truck to plug it in um, so I could get the slides out without running the batteries down any more than they are. So it has three slides, pulled by a 2,500, three quarter ton. Chevy diesel. <clears throat> That's what the main slide looks like. That's 36 inches. This 32 inches. And uh, that other opposing living room slide is a 24. That's also has the kitchen. What's going on here with my worst? Get another worst. So it is. Just try not to start and stop this too much. I've got on the tripod. Oh, say hi to Rocky. Say hi, boy. Say hi, baby boy. Are you my baby boy? Can you say hi? No? Okay. That's all right. Just look. <laughs> Such a good boy. It was built in 2014. We bought it in 2015. It's a 2015. I'm going to take the tripod in. And I'll take it off the tripod and pan some for you. But just set up in here so you can look around a little bit. And I guess, what is this thing? It's got to be something. Oh, it's something. Got this thing. All right, so um, I'll get in this frame. I don't know if my head's cut off, but um, or not. So this is the inside of our 2015 what did I go? fifth wheel voyage trailer. It's pretty typical of all the balances and all the all the uh, shades. Uh, Push-ups. All the windows are frameless. They all open like that. Right. We've got fantastic fans too, which is not a real really cool ten inch blade. And uh, we've got bed hoods over them so you can leave them open. Uh, while you're going down the road, it's like that. And then no way you can get in. I can turn that off. I think you can all hear my cool I don't have my external mic on it. But the finish in here, it's probably mostly alder, but it's cherry wood finish. I'm gonna go ahead and take the phone off. Mm -hmm. Pro oh, I could probably just go 
Yeah, 59 minutes of shooting went up. I don't know what just happened to this, but let's go ahead and give you the nickel tour of the coach. Like I was saying, this is probably alder wood <clears throat> with a cherry stain. The cabinet tree is nothing I'm home about, nor are the hinges, but it's actually very serviceable. I like these balances with the built in LEDs. Let me get this uh, tripod the hell out of the way here. Uh, outside, I think I'll take it outside. I know I'm, I'm, I'm turning into be a horrible videographer. I probably just shot the sun for you guys. Anyway, there's where we've been. I've been wanting to put the uh, Hawaiian Islands on there, but we've never been in the Hawaiian Islands on an RV. But all these states we have traveled to and camped in or traveled through in our RV. So back inside the coach, these panels, these cherry panels, are wrapped in vinyl uh, over MDF, and it's pretty damn cheap as, as well as that. The doors are solid stuff. They're solid. I think it's all in there. I'm pretty sure. Although, you know what? It does look like cherry. It might be cherry with a, with a cherry stain. Um, I do like the glass inserts. I like the LEDs. They, they look like that when they come on. Um, I like the way they trim the slides. Our slide outs. This is one giant slide, two foot deep, has a kitchen on it, has a refrigerator and freezer, which has panels, which is nice. Oven, four burner stove. Drawers work okay. When I first got this, the inside of the drawers and all the plywood were really, really rough. And uh, I, I had them taken out, sanded, and uh, re urethaned. Microwave works great. Love the ceiling in here. It's got that typical fifth wheel. It's a mid-rise or mid-size, but it's a mid-rise in terms of height. But all your fifth wheels have these great ceilings that take off and go up. I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It gives a sense of uh, volume and space. Um, yeah, I'm not super happy with that joint. It's kind of a yucky joint. And that's real molding. Nope, that's vinyl wrapped molding. It's all vinyl wrapped. Solid stock, vinyl wrap, solid stock, vinyl wrap, solid stock on the doors. Okay, so these uh, pieces of trim just fell off. I'm going to close the door, so bear with me. Walk out here and hopefully not, not take you in the sun. This is terrible to get too much glare. There we go. Inside lights. Lights. Okay. All kinds of lights. All kinds of lights. Lights here. Lights here. Lights over there. Lights there. Lights there. I got little pictures. Lights over the island. I put LEDs in everything. The ones that didn't have LEDs, I put LEDs in. So this trim was vinyl wrapped around MDF and was falling off around this door. And it's just absolutely. I don't know how good you can see that. So that was one of the first things I did is I found an African mahogany that I had some that matched the color <clears throat> pretty well. Made up this trim. <clears throat> then had to figure out how to fasten it. Made this guy, which these stainless steel hooks really serve us well. That guy, that's where I hang the backpack and cat and coat and just towels and you name it. And also made... Uh, these guys designed and made these guys. There was no shelves to put cups on back here in this part, but this makes into a uh, recliner. I mean, a, uh, a queen size bed, this sofa. There's another one of these shelves I made with cordial shelves stuck with uh, some finish nails and uh, silicon because this is just vinyl wrap quarter inch plywood over an uh, inch and a half or two inch metal studs and then a similar skin on the outside with a gel coat. These are our rugs. They're, uh, they're wool woven in India. And we've got uh, runners in a three by five that fill up this whole space so that when you walk in here, this is all filled with nice Oriental rugs. These uh, rocking leather recliners come out. Uh, they slide out. I, I put another piece of uh, 
of African mahogany back here as a band that we can mount hooks to so we could bungee and keep these guys from rocking around while we were on the way. And when they do come out, they get pulled out so they can fully recline. And then because they can lever, I made up these guys. I laminated two pieces of three quarter uh, uh, African mahogany. I made these guys and these guys go down on the floor like that and then we just pull the chair bases and the chair bases um, set on them so that they don't cantilever over the slide and rock. They do rock and recline but that allows them to recline and not tip because their base is hanging over um, this you know, cantilever over the slide and that piece of carpet there is the slide that whole thing comes in and right now it's fully extended our slides out so we have opposing slides so we really have 13 feet wide here in the living room. It's just it's massively wide. This is the fireplace, which we love. Uh, it looks like a fire. I'll turn it on. Just get the hell out of it. I wait. Yeah, I can't. I can't turn it on. And the reason I can't turn it on is because it's uh, it's hooked up to the, um, the 110. And I don't have 110 uh, hooked up right now. Just the batteries. As a matter of fact, I'm hooking up to my truck. So I think I'll turn some of these off so I don't run the battery down too much in my truck. Turn those off, turn that off. Okay, so that's the living room with the, with the couch that pulls out, rocking, squiggling, leather at the recliners, plenty of storage. We, we never use all our storage. And again, these are face frame cabinets. As you remember, face frame versus frameless or Euro. All vinyl wrapped styles and rails. Not, not super impressed with that. The doors are um, solid stock, solid cherry, which is good. Scribe to the lid. This is all a quarter inch vinyl plywood with a, um, or plywood with a vinyl over it, same as the walls. I do like, I know I've said this, but um, you have this similar sort of uh, uh, architrave pop out on your slides. You live the slide syndrome. And then I think the, the hundreds or uh, the African mahogany that we picked was a pretty good match for, uh, for the wood trim in here. Air conditioner works great. I can't turn it on either because it's on the, it's on the 110 and the fireplace. Oh my God, the fireplace is just great. It's got two speeds uh, or no speeds. It puts out heat on the, the low to high fan. It really blows some heat in here. The fourth air unit. It's propane and it's loud as hell, but it, it is really efficient in terms of getting a place hot. And so is the air conditioner. It's fairly well insulated, but it's also gets pretty dang hot. This uh, table comes with it. It's bolted down. Uh, the chairs lift up and there's storage under the seats. Um, this pulls out and there's a leaf in there that extends it to about like that with the leaf in, which is kind of nice. It's more than kind of nice. It's super nice. Okay, let's snap that back up. Yeah, and remember everything has got to be able to be secure so it goes down the road too. So let's um the island. Yeah. Under sink. Great uh great sink. Well sink. sink. Dish soap, dish drainer in there. Just drain in there. This is a solid surface. It's cut out. Ooh, this is bad. Look at all the water sticking. I hate that. Um, solid surface countertops. I like that. That's a plus, kind of a high end. They put some high end features on a medium end fifth wheel here. And the solid surface countertops is one of them. So let's go and see the rest of the coach. We'll walk up these stairs, which are the bane of my existence. They're just way too tall. Going down there, that's horrible. And let's go see the bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom. Bathrooms are important. Mirrored medicine cab, plenty of room, lots of light, huge shower. This is almost residential size shower. Put on a, a little uh, nicer head than the one that came with it. Skylight in the shower, you got a lot of that. Great shower, Great, uh, built in shelves. The John um, is a porcelain John and it works just great. And another uh, 10 inch blade, fantastic fan here with a, uh, including a vent uh, 
Uh, vent cover up, but that looks kind of dirty. I gotta clean that. Okay, okay. I love this curved wall. Do you love the curved wall? Yeah, no idea. Okay. Doors are all vinyl wrapped, but they're good looking. And now the bedroom. Yes, yes, the bedroom. Uh -huh. Hot air. Uh, TV for the bedroom. Giant amount of closet space. Queen size bed. And a window for either either side. Windows that, that, those are some of the things I had to have. Oh, bedroom air conditioner. We added that at the factory later when we went to Indiana on our first big long trip. So then we also added the uh, bedroom TV inside of the. These guys are. I, I need to put some shelves in there. Dresser drawers here. Oh, it's gonna be. Dresser drawers here. Four dresser drawers. Again, we have this weird plywood. It's now smooth. Weird because it wasn't finished. Uh, inside the closet, plenty commodious. We got a recess in there too, so lots of room in this closet. And also, storage, not a problem. And we have the two extra chairs for the dining room that live in there, as well as. Uh, this uh, crank, which allows us to uh, put down the stabilizing jacks in the back in case the motor freezes up or doesn't work or we don't have power. And a good storage under the bed. Again, this plywood, take off and refinish because it was all just completely raw and kind of splintering. So there's the bedroom. Let's go back out. I'll come back and put all these slides back. Okay, now I think I'm going to uh, shut you off and then take you over to the tiny house. Well, let's just take one more look and you can see how my little things tie in. And I also, my little things being my little cup holder shelves, I use that for my Wii Boost. This is my Wii Boost. It sits here like this. I lean my phone against it. We get 4G, uh, lots of, that's my cell phone booster and my antennas up above. I can show you that later or not, but um, by leaning my cell phone against that, we get 4G virtually anywhere we get a Verizon signal. And then I use that as a hotspot and then I get uh, Wi-Fi. Hmm. Interesting. That's awesome. I'm really jealous of that trailer. <laughs> Mine's a 1983. Yeah, big difference between an 83. And, yeah, uh, no a, kid. Right, Huge. To, uh, that's my garage. Let me show you the awning. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it just creates another room for us. And as far as the claw goes, from here, okay. Ring, the shelf, and this, 
And then I think I give you a tour of my garage. Oops, wait. Okay, I thought this was on, but it's not. So this is my garage again. Um, I wanted to take you in. What did I just show? I just show you my hatchet, my tomahawk, which I think was not recording. So yeah, there's my, this is recording. There's my Gerber tomahawk hatchet, which besides being the greatest hatchet that ever was, for making kindling and hewing branches and whatever. It's also, it's also got a, uh, a saw that pulls out of the back and I have only got one hand, so I'm not gonna show it to you. And I'm not gonna put this back on the tripod for now because I wanna take you into the coach. That's right, into the coach. As you can see, I kind of love axes. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, this is Tim. Tim, Arthur. How are you doing? Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Right there. Yeah. You work at, uh, wait, wait, what do you work at? What? Campo Vans. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, yeah. somebody's got to mute themselves. Yeah. Mute you yourself. Justin Bowsley? Mute yourself. Come on, you too. Because he was, this is Tim. This is the air. Hey, mute yourself. Hey, you look, you look really familiar. I don't know where I see that. Who the heck is that? Yeah. Yeah. Mute yourself. Yeah, well, which, which one works on the band? You do? Yeah. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, because yeah, this guy I know just did a whole lot. Rodney, I think you can just mute him for you. Oh. Very nice. Yeah. 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 What's so that? I, it's a uh, property management software, so I sell okay. software. Okay. Yeah. Tennis is there, so very cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm just uh, in my room on the computer and the phone, like eight to five. Hey, yeah. somebody so needs work, to mute themselves so right just, now. This is as usual, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty. Click on that. Are they gonna yeah. keep that? You need no. to mute yourself yeah, right I mean, now. Just, it said probably so somewhere twenty one. Okay. Okay. Well, so yeah, and friend. even when we do come back, it will be like optional. So. I, I I think he clicked mute and he double clicked it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Austin. And Austin, you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for being late. Yeah, what the hell, Austin? I'm glad so you're here. Just... <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Anybody else come in late? Yeah, I'm here. Donna, okay, good. Glad you're here, too. Donna, are you able to see the video, Donna? Yeah, I can see the video. Okay, good. And Jose Silva, let's see. Yeah, yeah you're here, you Jose know. Silva. Okay, good, good. Okay, I'm going to go back to the video and play the last two videos half and then one video okay so we're gonna go back to the video and let's go full screen go 
the bank had a short and it was, it was constantly um, cutting off and it was a hot summer and it was horrible. So the plumbing here is all done in PEX, PEX. I don't know how much you know about PEX, but uh, it's red's hot, blue's cold. ABS, you know, all the plumbing, but all over all water lines are packed, and it's been plumbing we have had no problem with. When we're on uh, shore water or uh, uh, city water, we have a pressure regulator where we hook where it hooks into, and we have plenty of water for our shower and uh, vanity and this thing. Uh, when we're on the road, not plugged in, we have a water reservoir that takes 50 gallons, and we turn on the water pump. Water pump works on the 12 volt batteries. Water pump, and then uh, it pumps water to our appliances. We have a clear floor and all the water still there. Oh, you know what? We're in here. You guys should see the floors. Wild turkey. Wild turkey bird. Beautiful. And this is a feather from a red tailed hawk. And, and we found them. And the wild turkeys were up at our friend's property in Sonoma. They, they nest up in the, in the trees at night. And this is turkey buzzard feather and another wild uh, turkey feather. So that's my wild turkey story, and I'm sticking to it. And is there any other plumbing? Oh, yeah, I want to show you um, some access. Okay. So let's just walk around the trailer. Right here, and I think I've got a piece on my hip. There's my tongue that I've plugged into the power of my truck because my batteries were kind of low for some inexplicable reason. Here's another this side, and some spider living in there. Propane. Now, this guy is the other side access to my garage. It's locked, I'm sure. All these guys hold up with these really nice holes, um, stays. And you can see uh, some of the, like there's a plumbing for the shower, all LED lights, uh, both sides of the garage in here and on the other side. Some of the wiring coming through. And then this, is a, this would be a plumbing chase in here. You can see, yeah, there's a pump in there. There's a water pump in there. And hey, remember I said um, uh, quarter inch skin on the inside, vinyl wrap? It's actually eighth inch. You, you see it there. You see it. You see, you see the thickness of it right there. Yeah, it's so thin. There's a pump in there. There's a water pump in there. And all kinds of stuff in this panel is accessible. There's ducting, there's all kinds of stuff, valves. Wow, so yeah, this is the, we're going to be able to do some segueing from the tiny house to this baby based on uh, the fact that the, the uh, plumbing systems are relatively similar in a lot of ways. Okay, I'll pick this up again inside the tiny house. Okay, one Uno Moss video, the tiny house. Okay, it says we got 29 minutes on the battery. I'm going to believe it. Here's the outside of our tiny house. It's got a loft in it. That's a cypress uh, lap strake three inch. Sorry about the finger, it goes away really soon. Exciting surface nail could have been blind nail, but uh, Pat decided to surface nail it. He had his reasons. Vinyl windows. Uh, Jim put that hood stub the, for the hood fan vent right there, which I didn't like at all. This is our on demand water heater, which uh, does get it out of the realm of RVing. You're going to need a, a lot more gas than just propane. You're going to need natural gas to do that. So Tom, it's an 8x24 trailer. There goes my dog. Don't go far. Come on. And it's been sitting a while. Got a few spider webs on it. 
but it doesn't leak. Uh, I hung this entry door and Jim well back and hardware it. A couple of classes ago. So nice, nice uh, head flashings over the top of the trim. It's all screwed on. It's supposed to be plugged too. I'm not sure when Pat's decided to do that. So, uh, and I'm not sure, I imagine these stairs will go with it or somebody will make some stairs because what's gonna to happen to this tiny house is someone's gonna buy it, they're gonna haul it to uh, a piece of land and whatever that might be. And then they're going to uh, plumb it. Uh, we're gonna put in a, we have a composting toilet, which I think we're gonna change the floor plan on this and do a regular toilet, regular shower, and then have all the waste rather than go to reservoirs and we don't like my trailer. These are going to be stubbed to the outside so you can just hook up and hard plumb to a sewer or septic system or whatever. Uh, plug in shore power, uh, you know, um, house 110 and also um, water, uh, city water or whatever, whatever water you run. You can see we got a sub panel up there. Um, it looks like most of the Romex is in and most of the PEX is in. Now, this is a stub for a wash and dryer box for a stack. This is going to be the staircase. These are the stair horses that we cut and that I want to make up. Uh, they, they, one should be, they're, they're mirror images of each other. They're, they're not side by side, they're turned end to end. This is the bathroom. There's going to be a pocket wall here. Uh, we can go over the, um, we can go over the floor plan. It's going to get modified when we get back into it because uh, we were going to put our tanks down there and now we're not. So. There's our pocket frame. We've got a lot to do. And I wish Jim hadn't stubbed that right there. That means I'm totally limited to center of stove being there, but okay. That's the way we're gonna have to draw it. And once I put this staircase in here, then we can trim it out with clear fur. We can trim out all the windows with jam extensions and a craftsman style clear fur trim. We're gonna use half inch maple or birch plywood instead of drywall. The skin is gonna be a little heavier in drywall, but um, it's going to be nice and solid and will be nice for nailing for us too. And if the guys did a good job in the framing, I was involved in the framing, then we are going to have a minimum amount of problems. But uh, it's all going to be isonine. We got to pull up this deck so we can put that closed cell, uh, that this is open cell, uh, but blown in foam insulation. We've even got hole downs, holding it the, the plates to the um, studs to the plate for seismic these uh, three by sixes or three three by fives three by fours four by fours i don't know what these are exactly four by fours joists are hung the joist hangers that i like to figure out a way to cover those up but when we start talking about window trim you'll you'll understand uh, what i mean by jam extender because uh, we're going to extend these out and push her out to the half inch supply uh, that we're going to skin with and then trim out and, uh, yeah bathroom that's where our shower is obviously stubbed for so a lot of, a lot of work to do but we've got to get back into the planning stage and get it redrawn and replanned out and uh, i already have a cabinet i have a i have a, a drawing for the staircase and i have i don't have a drawing for the balustrade we're going to do balustrades and handrail systems at some point in one of our lessons coming up one of our modules uh, and then I have a drawing for the cabinets, but that's probably going to change somewhat too. And then this is supposed to be a, maybe a built-in couch. And there's something hanging above. Oh yeah, we've got a split, um, a mini split air conditioning unit that will hang above. So th this is really uh, not meant to be uh, towed behind and set up in different places. It's more meant to be towed somewhere and set up on a semi-permanent basis, but you could tow it someplace else. Okay, I want to say uh, goodbye right now for this and uh, and then I'll meet you back in the shop. Okay. Well, 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 I think that is the extent of our videos. So um, I'm going to stop sharing here. So comments, questions. And what you just saw on the seven videos you just saw. Nobody, anybody? Comments, what, questions? What do you like about? Go for it, John.
John? Or whoever. Um, I, I had the impression from what uh, the other teachers have said there was a little more done. The tiny house? Yeah. You thought the tiny house was more done? That's what you're saying? Yeah. From what Pat and Jim have said about it? Yeah. What have they said? <laughs> Well, no, seriously, can you remember what they said? Because, you know, the, they, ex, the, in, the exterior is done other than the plugging. So it's dried in and the roof is on, the exterior is done. And I figure the tiny house is just like any other construction project, basically, is when you get it dried in, get the windows and doors in, <clears throat> the siding on, the roof on, you're halfway done. You're half way done only half way done the interior finish work you know the show is in the stuff that we're doing now and that's not even done really i mean the the mechanical is not completely rough the, um, the electrical is not completely rough the plumbing is not completely rough the uh, insulation is not in in so there, there's a boat ton of work to do on that trailer which is the reason why i don't want to sell it because um we got a lot of stuff we can do on it Tons of stuff that successive classes can do. And it's not something that we'll do in a distance education thing. You know, when you when we're back together, whenever that happens, you know, the class will will do jam extenders, we'll do all this stuff. So um, I'm gonna go over a review with you. Um, I'm gonna go over a review for the what you can expect for the midterm after a break, a short break. It's five after or six minutes until seven. Five after seven, be back here for the review. Okay, everybody got that? Everybody, two, two people I can't see, which are Eric and Donna. Hopefully you got that too. Be back here at five after seven. Okay, okay, cool. See you here. Uh... Oh, T V, what are you doing? Oh. What you doing? You wanna go sit in the car? You wanna bring me in your car? You want to go? You want to go to the car? Come on.
back. Yep. Five oh, after right. seven. Right. I, I was going to say something to you. You know that all that PEX in the uh, in the uh, tiny home. Yeah. That's all been UV exposed, and I bet you it's been a little over two months. Oh, but you know, not no, it hasn't been UV exposed. I mean, you might have gotten some sunlight through those windows in certain parts of the day for, you know, for for minutes at a time, but it hasn't like it hasn't been exposed to uh, you know the sun outside. Those kinds of UVs, yeah, UVs bounce around that trailer. Yes, they do, but but. For my money, you'd have to have that thing sitting out in the sun to get the kind of UVs you're talking about that would really damage the PEX to the point where it could compromise it. So PEX is in fine shape. There's nothing wrong with the PEX. It just needs to be finished. Everything needs to be finished. That's all That's all that needs to happen is it just needs to be finished. OK, so hopefully everybody's back. Draw on. Okay, in the meantime, I'll, I might move this over to draw. But <clears throat> so next week we'll have a midterm. <clears throat> and I haven't decided how I'm going to do it uh, yet. So I've got two options. I've got the easy, the way I know I can do it, the way I've always done it, which is uh, your midterm exam will be a 50 question word doc which I can put up uh, you know, on the module and you can grab it and, uh, and print it out. You can take, you have to print it out. You could download it to a computer and answer it. You can highlight it. You could figure out a bunch of ways and you can also figure out how to get them to me. That's not the ideal way, the way we're doing this Canvas thing. The ideal way would be for me to format my midterm onto the canvas shell and through the uh, quiz thing I'm a bopper. Um, <clears throat> but I have to, I'd have to reformat the whole thing. And if I had, if I take the time, if I have the time and I'm able to take the time, that's the way I'm gonna do it because if I do it right, I've, well, I've got some training, um, this guy from FRC, um, then it will, I, it will be corrected as well. It will take a lot of the manual stuff out of it for me, and which should be easier for you guys too. So I can't promise you it's possible that I will just fall back to my old format, which I'll get you a Word doc, and then we'll figure out how we're going to do the test. Okay. There, um, it's for the most part multiple choice, um, with maybe three or four or five uh, true or false questions. There will be we we will have had seven safety meetings, tailgate safety meetings by next week. We'll have a tailgate safety meeting next week as well, but that will be on the final. But there'll be one question from every one of our tailgate safety meetings. So uh, all of those tailgate safety meetings, all the topics are up on the Canvas module. So just be sure you can access that. So you're gonna wanna be able to access Canvas and you're gonna wanna be able to access your books too. I know we only read just uh, uh, you know th three or four pages um, read together, but you guys have been assigned chapter five, so there will be questions from chapter five, and I will make them probably for the twelfth edition, um, and I'll pick questions that uh, will work for both editions, and there may be questions from the workbook, and I'll pick questions that are in both workbooks as well. But there, uh, you know, there will be questions on chapter five, and you're welcome to use the book to take the test and use the workbook to, I think the workbook is just questions, but you're welcome to use the books to answer the questions. One question on each of our tailgate safety meetings. And what I would tell you is uh, look for the words. So, um, you know, I'll ask a question about it and there'll be words in there. And so what I, I may just rephrase something but, but look for some specific wording because um, I, I have been known to, to put answers that could work, but they're not the answers that come out of the verbiage in the safety meeting. So look for those words. 
And, and if I have an example of that, I'll tell you before the test next week. Um, so the syllabus, you may have a question about the syllabus. That's, that's part of your deal is knowing what's on the syllabus. And that's on the module on the Canvas. Uh, safety questions, I mentioned that to you. Um, explain how I'll do the uh, how I'll do the test. Maybe we're Canvas did that, didn't I? Chapter five in the twelfth or the eleventh. They're both chapter five. They're both power tools. So. Um, Finnish carpentry is the installation of standing and running trim and the installation of doors and windows and their trim. Stand, uh, an example of standing trim would be the casing around a door or window. Uh, example of running trim would be baseboard or crown mold. Standing and running trim and hanging doors and windows. Uh, finished carpentry also includes handrail systems, balustrade staircases. And we, we haven't gotten to balustrade, so you won't have any questions about balustrades or staircases, but we will um, uh, in the next, in the later uh, part of the semester. I just heard something. Oh, oh, I'm hearing somebody is not muted. Somebody mute yourself, <laughs> please. Okay, so uh, standing and running trim. So casings, okay, casings. Do you, do you remember the two types of casings? The two basic types of casings? Two basic types. Mitered and uh, budding, or yeah, butted, but we'll, and we'll, for one of a different word besides budding, we're gonna call um, we're gonna call that uh, craftsman style. So mitered and budded, and then budded uh, craftsman style, which has a wider head, a thicker head than the legs, wider and thicker. That's, that makes it craftsman style. And there's variations on that theme, but butted or craftsman style and then miter, which you'd use for virtually any profile of molding. You gotta have a, you gotta have a miter, right? And then, then you've got what we're gonna do on this house that I'm building right now, which is, uh, which is basically trimless. I'm gonna use a mill core corner and I'm gonna build a trimless window trim, it really does trim. But. So from face on, so from face on, you're just gonna see the window frame. Is this craftsman style you're going over right now? Nope, I'm going Minor. over the third type, which is trimless. So is that the same as plaster or sheetrock finish? Yeah, that's exactly right. So a lot of people around here bullnose, but this house I'm doing is going to be square. So in a cross section of this, if this is the king, king stud and trimmer, the jams, the door jams and the, and the window jams as much as possible, ideally, are dead flush, windows open out. See, that's a window. They're dead flush. So on the inside, the 5-8 sheetrock stops here and there's a mill core corner applied to it. It's mudded on and it's a square metal corner that the mud goes over and it paints. Mud kind of comes right to there and then this, this edge paints. And on the exterior, it's a similar thing. It's a it's a plaster ground. Actually, I don't know if we'll do a plaster ground. It's probably again a metal corner and stucco on the outside. So it just grounds to the jam, as opposed to cross section of a cased jam. You have casing, which is 
the drywall five eighths proud of your framing so that your drywall is flush with your jam and then your profile casing trims onto the wall and onto the jam. Just like I'm gonna show you, I was gonna film that, but I got right out of time yesterday. So, and then, and then um, this is also done as bullnose. So what you see a lot in Santa Barbara are jams that are bullnose tape, right? Outsides, bullnose, insides, bullnose, again, drywall, bullnose, but, but really on, um, almost all of your uh, nail and fin windows now, you see in this corner, yeah. You know, you've got a, you've got your trimmer stud. Um, they have a nailing fin, right? And then they have a piece of uh, extrusion that comes out like that. And then th their frame starts and their windows in here. But um, this fin is where um, the weather stripping goes behind or not weather stripping, but the weather proofing goes behind and caulking goes behind, right? It's a nailing fin and it, it supplies a ground for the plaster to ground to. It's, it's part of the window. So we, I know you haven't seen that yet, but just let you know that I'm trimming out that most flat, nail on flange windows today have a built-in ground. And you don't have to use that ground. You can add a brick mold. You can you can add a build up and do a bull nose. You can do all kinds of stuff. Two basic types of trim: uh, interior trim, which is mitered in Craftsman style or butted. Craftsman style or butted. Let's just say they mean the same thing um, right now. <clears throat> I mean, you can butt molding in a different way than Craftsman style, but why why would you really? I don't, I don't see it. So um, okay. Uh, types of blades, remember that? Types of blades. Types of blades. Uh, I, we didn't talk too much about types of blades, like uh, triple chips and rip blades. But um, the main blade that you're going to be dealing with that we showed you on that table saw work was an ATD, right? Alternate. Top bevel. So the set of one tooth is a raker tooth like that. And then the next tooth is like that. And then the next tooth is like that. And so on, right? So they go like that. And they're, the carbide's thicker than the steel of the saw. So they make a kerf. It's wider than the body of the blade, so the blade can pass through without burning or binding. ATBs. There are also, also triple chips and high HTs, um, which is a high angle. I actually show this is a very high angle, so a typical angle would be more like that. And then there's a high angle, and that's for cutting melamines and uh, laminated materials. You get a cleaner cut. As it, um, in the case of a table saw, your saw is cutting into the wood, you get a great cut on top, and as it leaves, you can get some blowouts. Now this, um, in melamines, it's very important, as well as plywoods, but especially melamines and vinyls. So you use a high AT, and then triple chip is made for laminates, and that has a chisel tooth. And the next tooth is a raker tooth set, and the next tooth is a chisel tooth, and then a raker tooth, and then a chisel tooth, and then a left record tooth. So, and that chisel tooth, and then there are blades that are just chisel tooth. Um, those are the, usually multiple teeth per uh, inch or per blade, uh, you know, like an 80 tooth. And they're for cutting plastic laminates. They work really well for, for hard, uh, phenolic backed, tr um, high pressure plastic laminates. We talked about solid stock and uh, sheet goods. Solid stock and sheet goods, you remember the difference between them? We, um, there will be questions on carpentry math, on fractions and converting fractions, uh, addition and subtraction, and addition and subtraction, um, longer sums of uh, fractions that have uh, addition and subtraction to come up to a number, um, some whole inches to come up with feet and inches. Um, there'll be some converting to decimals 
I want you to convert to decimals, maybe one question. I don't think more than that, but you'll be converting fractions to decimals um, to do that. Board feet, you all remember board feet? Board feet. We're going to be, uh, there's going to be some questions on board feet. You're going to need to figure board feet. I'm going to give you some boards to figure board feet on. And then I'm going to tell you probably in another question what the price is. But just remember S2S equals surface two sides. S4S equals surface four sides. Um, S L R one E equals straight line ripped one edge. And that S two S hardwood, red oak, S two S say eight quarter red oak, S two S nets one and three quarter inches thick. Okay, remember that. And four quarter maple S2S nets. Rodney, can okay. you turn your camera? Say again, please. Can you turn the camera? Oh yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. That better? Yeah, a uh, little bit back to the right. So? Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, eight quarter red oak S2S, that's an inch, inch and three quarter, six quarter S2S, maple nets at one and a quarter, four quarter S2S, mahogany nets at three quarter, okay, as opposed to dimensioned wood. So when we're figuring, when you're figuring board feet, you're figuring eight quarter red oak. You're figuring eight quarter as two by, right? So it would be eight quarter what? So eight quarter um, to net six. So that's two by six. And two by six is a great number for figuring board feet because anything that adds up to 12, when you multiply the width, uh, the thickness times the width, then it's one board foot, right? So two times six over 12 is one. So for every lineal foot, of a two by six, it's one board foot. And in a one by 12, one times 12 is 12, 12 over 12 is one. So anything in one by 12, one foot of it is a board foot. So a 10 foot one by 12 is 10 board feet. The formula for board feet is thickness times width in inches times feet Thickness times width times feet times length and feet. Thickness and width is times length and feet. So to, to prove it, uh, divide, I'm sorry, over 12, divided by 12. So uh, a two by 12 by 10, I can just tell you is 20 board feet. Well, let's see if it proves out. Two times 12 is 24 times 10 is 240 over 12, 12 into 240 equals 20. So yes, it does prove out. So as long as it's thickness in inches times width in inches times length in feet, that gives you the, the board feet in one board. Now, uh, I, I always figured it per foot. So in other words, if I wanted to know what a two by 10, board feet in a two by 10, I'd figure how much in one foot. So two times 10 is 20 over 12 is one and two thirds. So for every foot of a two by 10, it's 1.66 or one and two thirds board feet. So a 10 footer is 16.66, 17 board feet. Okay, so board feet. So that's the formula, thickness times width times length over 12. And that's the board feet for that board because you're using length and feet, okay? Okay. Board feet, and then you remember how, um, you remember how, uh, how solid stock is sold by the, by the MBF, by the mill or thousand board feet, 
which if you just move the decimal place three points, then you get the dollars per board foot. So we talked about, I think we talked about um, two by fours, uh, Doug Fur number one, these days going for, um, going for uh, $750 per MBF. That's mill board feet or 1,000 board feet. So if it's $750 for 1,000 board feet, how much is it for one board feet, one board foot? Anybody? 75 cents. There you go. Moving that decimal one, two, three places, it becomes 75 cents a board foot. So, uh, you know, a, a typical two by four, an eight foot by two, uh, two by two. <laughs> a typical two by four, two by four by eight. To get the board foot of that, we'll just do it over 12. So two times four is eight, eight times eight is 64. 64 over 12 goes what, five and a third? Five and one third. Um, it's a five and a third uh, board feet. For an eight foot two by four. And if it costs 750 for a thousand board feet and 75 cents a board foot, then Let's do five times 75 cents is what? 350, 375, it's about four bucks, right? It's about $4 for an eight foot stick. That used to cost half that. Okay, so there'll be some board foot stuff, figuring board foot, and then figuring, translating the board feet to money, figuring out the board feet, and then I'll give you some some uh, values of what the board feet is. And then, then you remember there's also MSF, which is how sheet goods are priced. And sheet goods are your plywoods and particle boards and MDFs and classic cores and um, the various cores and um, with, with wood veneers or plastic laminate or vinyl on them that come in four by eights. They also come in four by tens and four by twelves too. Some of them, um, a lot of stuff comes in five by eights, and some of it comes in five by tens and five by twelves. Mostly substrates like particle boards and MDFs that you would laminate um, plastic laminate, uh, you know, for mica type stuff too. But you can have anything laid up. You can have any kind of plywood laid up on any kind of core. Uh, and if you're doing stuff like that's, you know, if you're doing like we did this place with an architecturally sequenced matched wall of teak. It was about a 40 foot wall and it was 10 sheets and we had it laid up and we picked the veneers so they were architecturally sequenced out of the same run and they were matched and man, just it was worth every nickel of it. So it was rather by an off the shelf, uh, you know, a lift or a half a quarter lift of teak plywood and it's still 120 sheet. I think we paid like 180 a sheet, maybe even 200, but we got museum quality. So M MSF is mill square foot, thousand square feet. So again, four by eight sheets of plywood, which is our pretty pretty standard. Most of your plywoods are going to be thirty two square feet. And then if your um, if your red oak veneered shop plywood is two thousand dollars. per thousand square feet, how much is it for one square foot? Anybody? If it's 2000 for a thousand square feet, how much is one square foot? Anybody? $2. There you go, thank you. Moving the decimal plate, one, two, three, it's now $2. So a sheet of plywood, a four by eight sheet of plywood, which is standard sheet of plywood, 32 square feet times two bucks is a $64 sheet of plywood plus eight and three quarter percent tax. So I, I voted today, I haven't dropped my ballot in, 
But it, what made me think of that? So vote. Don't forget to vote, you know. Okay? Vote, man. Please, everybody vote. Please vote. And please vote the way I want you to vote. I'm not going to tell you what that is. I'm just hoping you will. <laughs> are, are, are you going to mail it in or are you going to drop it off at one of the I'm drop, drop it off, boxes? Man. Yeah, I, I live in San Roque, so Mackenzie Park is pretty close. I'm going to drop it off tonight if they're open. I don't know if they're open, but yeah, I'm dropping mine off. It's not that I don't trust that it'll get there by the post office, but now they've given us these places to take it to. So, yeah, I'm definitely dropping it off. Definitely. And the cool thing, you know, I've done um, I've done mail-in ballots for, uh, I don't know, probably the last, as long as I can remember, 40 or 50 years. Uh, and I, I like it a lot because it allows me to sit down and do due diligence and really... You know, and I, I've got the internet there and I can research the, the issues and people if I need to and stuff like that. So I really like that. I really like having the time to uh, consider um, what I vote for. All right. So uh, do you remember what comes first when the call outs of doors and windows? Who can tell me what comes first when the call outs of doors and windows? Length? <laughs> no. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's width is always first. And uh, I can't say that strong enough. Always width and then height. So length doesn't really come into a call out for a door and window. Like, you know, that door is a 2468. So it's 28 inches by 80 inches, but it's always a 2468. It's never a 6824. That door is a 3068. That door is a 3068. That window is an 8040, that window is an 8040. And, it, and if you ordered it, a 4080, you'd be unhappy. Oh, okay, so that's a, that's a given, a nomenclature. And it's important that you know the nomenclature so you don't get um, people confused and, and start, um, and you don't start a boneyard at an early um, stage because you're gonna have a boneyard. If you're in this, if you're in this game, if you're doing a carpentry for money, you're gonna have a boneyard. You're gonna make mistakes, and you're gonna have to eat stuff, lumber, doors, windows, moldings, you name it. You're gonna, you're gonna have a boneyard. I guarantee it. Okay, so um, you remember the shop tour, the virtual shop tour, and the building of the cabinet. That you will be tested on that. There will be something in there um, that you'll need to pull up. So again. With luck, it'll be in your head. And if you need to go and watch the video to answer the damn test, then do that. So it, here's my philosophy about testing. I'm not sure I told you this, told you all this. But, um, you know, there are, there are some, some instructors that would um, have you take a test with no, uh, no aids to your test, right? No, uh, and certainly no open book and no access to your phone or your internet. Uh, that, I mean, that's not me. I, I want you to find the answers. So if you if you didn't listen or weren't here or didn't get it or uh, it's not in there somewhere and you can't recall the answer, then I want you to find it because in finding it, you will learn the answer. And and the last time I looked, I'm hoping that's what you're here for, is to learn how to do some stuff. I can't really teach you anything. I can just show you stuff. It's going to be up to you to learn it. But I, I, I think the tests are valid and good because um, they, they not only test what you, uh, what you know, but they allow you to learn some things and find out stuff. Or not. A lot of people just don't care. They, uh, I find a lot of students just go with what they know and they don't check it. They don't take the time and that's fine too. It's, it's your life and you get to call it how it is. At every single turn, you're responsible. <clears throat> so the shop tour, the, the cabinet, right? The cabinet, you remember the cabinet? How could you forget the cabinet? You can't forget the cabinet. The cabinet. That cabinet. So when they ask you questions about the hinging or the system or the front spreader, rear spreader, back, unfinished ends, the edge banding, um, 
the tools that did that? I don't know yet. I haven't decided what I'm going to. Because because it just depends on how much time I give myself and how much time I have. Because um, this is a whole new ball game. <laughs> It's a whole new ball game. I, and I hope I can get put this together. I shouldn't say that. I should just tell myself I'm just going to do it, but do this thing where I get it. Uh, I get everything on canvas for you guys, guys and gal. Can't forget Donna. Okay. Any, do I have any questions so far? Any, any, any clarification or anything like that? No? We're good? Everybody's good so far? Okay. So, uh, with versus high, the shop tour. Right, shop tour, the building of the cabinet, uh, drafting. So all of you owe me a drawing. You all owe me a drawing. And I have, and I have definitely not, oh, actually you owe me two drawings. I have definitely not gotten drawings from everybody. So if you got a drawing to me, either by taking a picture on your phone, sending it by phone or email it to me, you know who you are, uh, at some point, want to get around to, to really uh, counting beans, I will let the people know that owe me drawings. Um, you need to get them done. You don't need to get them done by next week. Uh, and I'll tell you when it gets critical. Okay. Okay. Uh, but we did learn to sketch in dimension and then draw to scale on an eight and a half by 11. And some of the components of that I think are very, very important components are on the page, you want to pick the largest scale that you can fit your drawing on the page. That's very important. The larger the scale, the better. The larger scale you can fit on the page, pick that. And also lay your page out so that you can do what we did with that cabinet drawing. With that, um, I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna bring it up and see if I can do this. I should get I should get better at this. That's for damn sure. I'm hoping. Uh, well, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna press my luck right now. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. But that those drawings are posted. The sketch and dimension drawings and the scale drawings are posted uh, on your canvas shell. So check them out. And. Uh, and maybe some questions about drawing probably will be. I like to see a sheet well titled and dated, and things clean and clear and legible. Uh, you know, make a drawing. If you're doing a scale drawing, make it so that other people can interpret it and understand what the hell it means. That's that's that should be your goal. Um, do you remember I showed you those finish guns? Possibly it could be a question about the guns I got, the guns I like to nail with. I like the nail that casing on the outside. I know I didn't, I'm gonna video me doing this casing one of these days really soon. <laughs> but this is that, uh, This is that 15 gauge nailer. It's just a butte, two and a half inch nail, cordless, 15 gauge nailer for nailing the outside of the trim, for nailing a part of the trim. This, that part out there that goes into the trimmer of the Kingston, where nailing to the jam. going to use now this is this is this is this is a real this is a wire pinner that those are 15 gauge nails these are 23 gauge wire nails they're like there's no head they're like pieces of wire so it's a little small for that but they it's an inch and uh, three eighths nail I got in here and it's definitely got a hold and I will show you because I will do miter casing around that and then I'll strip that door and I'll, I'll do a craftsman casing on that door. But this one's gonna get mitered and it's gonna get mitered in the video, we'll watch it together. And we'll do my, my version of it, but you may um, see something about a Shannon's version of it. 
Because you, you we, I showed you guys a pretty, pretty comprehensive video of a guy trimming out a door and a window. The guy's name is Shannon. And that's available for you to watch. And if there's a question that you got to get, you know, get somewhere to find the answer. You'll know how to do it because it's embedded in your canvas shell. You realize this is the first time I've ever had anything to do with canvas, anything ever. I didn't even know what canvas was. Not to, not to mention that it even existed. And look at me now. Well, it's semi half ass, but it works. Okay, so we did a floor plan drawing too, right? We got the largest scale we could get to get that on, and I, and I took some poetic license and and shrunk the room, the actual room. And you know what I didn't show is I didn't show the pop out in our tool room. Hmm, hmm, maybe I'll do that and show some doors. But in the meantime, it's just the walls, the two windows and the door, the floor plan, and uh, you guys owe me that drawing, but I may ask you something about it, who knows? Fractions, decimals, board feet, uh, millboard foot, mill square foot, and uh, electrical from the book. Remember we talked about current and all that stuff um, last week. Okay, uh, questions from the peanut gallery. Any questions? Come on, come on. I know you're burning with questions. Who's um, got a question? For the, for the, for the quiz, uh, you think... Tell me who's they, talking. I can't see you. Eric Mendes. Okay. Tell me again. Uh, what chapters of the 11th edition are you going to like... Uh, base the quiz. Okay, so what if you um, if you didn't understand what I was saying? Let me just get back to a good view here. I want to get to it. Okay, here we go. I want to, I want to see everybody. So um, the questions that I pick from the book will be the same in the eleventh or the twelfth. Okay. okay, same exact questions, same exact answers. They'll be available for you to find in the 11th or the 12th. Okay, I'll make sure of that. And the same thing with the workbook questions. They'll be the same question in the 11th or the 12th workbook. I won't pick questions that are in one thing and, and, you know, and not in the other. So whichever you got, 11th or 12th, you'll find the answer. That's where they'll be from. Okay, any other questions? Come on, come on. Noel, what are you going to say? What do you got to say, Noel? Come on, you got a question? <laughs> I got to make sure I got you here, Noel. Let's see. Uh, Noel, I didn't have you here, man. And you're here. You came late, eh? Yeah. When you guys come late next, um, chime in and, to, and see if you can't stop me or say something, you know, that, hey, I came late. Otherwise, I got to make sure I got you here. So, Victor Gallegos, did you come? I know Donna came. I got her. Vinny, he's history in the wind. Bran? Braun? No, so no Braun and no uh, no Victor Gagos. Okay. So any other questions? All right. Uh, can you can you go over the like the the fractions and things again? Hell no. Sure. sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course I will. Okay. So that was Noel asked me right to go over the fractions and converting fractions right for the for the math. Okay. Now pin my. In my video. Okay. okay, so fractions. So when you're adding up fractions, you've got to convert the fractions to the lowest common denominator. So let's just do it. We'll do a simple problem. Okay. Let's say on your tape, your tape reads 40 and 5 eighths. And you got one of those idiotic tapes. Like this one. Yeah, just like this one. Even though I can't see it on here. But let's just say I can see it. And let's just say it set it. And that the tape itself is three and a quarter, not three, like good Stanley tapes are, but three and a quarter. So that means if I'm going like say 
from here to here, inside. I'm budding to that, right? And I'm reading, and actually, let's just do a real problem. And I'm reading 43 and 5 eighths. I've got to add three and a quarter to it because that's my tape, right? My tape is three and a quarter because I buttered it. Okay, so I, these are dissimilar fractions. I've got to go to the lowest common denominator. So the lowest common denominator is the smallest fraction. So between a quarter or quarters and eighths, what's smaller? Noel, what's smaller? Is an eighth smaller than a quarter? Well, is an eighth smaller than a quarter? Yeah. Yeah, it is. An Sorry, eighth is smaller than a quarter. An eighth, and one eighth is actually half uh, as small as a quarter. So, so, and so the lowest common denominator is going to be the highest low number. So it's going to be eighths. If it were sixteenths, it'd be sixteenths. If it was thirty seconds, it'd be thirty seconds, right? So the lowest one, the smallest number. So we got to convert this. Leave the forty-three alone for now, and let's just convert. Um, the three, the quarter to eighths, so we can add up the eighths. So, so to do that, four goes into eight two times, right? Four goes into eight two times. So two times one equals two. So, so, oh, that's not true. But yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> So one quarter is two eighths. One quarter is two eighths. Now, like seven eighths? Well, forget that. Um, three quarters, we want to turn it into eighths. Four into eight is two times three equals six. So it's six eighths. So what we did here is we changed three and a quarter to be three and two eighths. And we're gonna add the whole number three here, makes that 46. And we're gonna add two eighths here, that's two eighths and five eighths, two and five is seven. So that's 46 and seven eighths. It's a pretty easy one. And we did it by converting our fractions to the lowest common denominator. You seeing this, Noel, you getting it? So let's do some multiple. We'll do one that's that's a little more complex, and we'll just do uh, one eighth plus three sixteenths plus a half plus uh, three quarters equals, and no minuses for now. Okay, those are pluses. So what's the smallest fraction in this equation? Sixteenths. Sixteenths, right? Yeah. Sixteenth is the, the biggest number, but it's, a, but it's the smallest fraction. Okay, so we've got to convert one eighth, one half, and three quarters to sixteenths. Okay, we don't have to convert the three sixteenths because it's already sixteenths. So to convert one eighth to sixteenth, it's eight into sixteen goes two, two times one is two. So that's two sixteenths plus three sixteenths plus a half. We've got to turn that into sixteenths. Two into sixteen goes eight times one, the top number, is eight sixteenths, plus three quarters. We've got to turn that into sixteenths. Four goes into sixteen four times, times the top number three is twelve, equals twelve sixteenths. All right? So two and three is five, plus eight is thirteen, plus twelve is twenty-five, so it's twenty. Five, um, 12, 25 sixteenths, 25 sixteenths, and we can't let 25 sixteenths stand. So 16 into 25 goes one with nine sixteenths left over. So the answer of the equation, the sum of one eighth plus three sixteenths plus a half plus three quarters is one and nine sixteenths. Now, I'm hoping you saw how we got there. Uh, if you if you didn't, this is on video, and you can go back and review it. But I don't know if I can make it any simpler than that. And does somebody want to chime in? Does somebody have anything um, for Noel or someone else that might um, 
um, be struggling with this converting um, the fractions. It's simple math, simple multiplication, simple division, simple addition with, with, with numbers, you know, one through um, seven, basically. So just uh, don't be daunted by it. And, and remember, when converting decimals, if I ask you to convert decimals, let's say, let's say I want to know the decimal equivalent of 9 sixteenths. All you got to do is divide 9 by 16. And that will give you the decimal equivalent. Three quarters, the decimal equivalent, divide 3 by four. So the bottom number is divided into the top number, and that will give you the decimal equivalent of any fraction. Okay? It's, it's fairly basic math. It's uh, relatively simple math, but it's not all that simple, right? It, it's, it, it can be complicated, especially if you struggle with math. And as a carpenter, I want you to stop struggling with math, okay? You got a phone, it's got a calculator on it. You can use your calculator. Now I realize you can't punch in nine sixteenths with your calculator, but you can sure as heck, you know, turn nine sixteenths into, into 30 seconds, right? Because 16 goes into 32 twice. Two times nine is 18. And maybe you got to use your calculator to go two times nine. You'll still know it's, it's 18, 18, 30 seconds. And that's, you just reduced that fraction, okay? So if, if you're not clear, or if there's anybody out there that's not clear, and Noel, if that didn't clear it up for you, um, don't hesitate to call me up, text me, email me. And if there's anything, I can help you make that clearer. But also don't um, hesitate to just Google, you know, video tutorial on converting, um, Fractions to the lowest common denominator. You know, there's so much information out there. It's ridiculous. Hmm. All right. So I'm going to unpin myself here. Oh, I left the recording through the whole break. Oh, well. What are you going to do? <laughs> it's just the way it goes. So, uh, okay. Any other questions for me? Anybody? Anybody? Any questions at all? Any uh, any core clarifications? Want to know anything about the test? About want to know anything about the logistics of the test? Okay, here's one for you. So if I do the, um, I want you to show up like a regular like a regular pet like a regular class. You got to show up. And when I administer the test, depending upon how I administer it, I'm probably just going to turn you loose. And I will have a time limit on the test. I may or may not set it for, for next Thursday night. I may give you an extra day. I, I don't know. I, I haven't decided. And, uh, and, if you, and if any of you want to lobby for more time than that two and a half, well, actually, you have three hours and 45 minutes is your class time. If you want to lobby for more time than that, be my guest and lobby. Lobby me. You can do it um, you know, privately if you like. But uh, we'll show up here and we'll take the test in either I'll, I'll, I'll instruct you how to get it in a Word doc. It'll be embedded in Canvas. Um, or um, I'll instruct you on how to, how to take it on Canvas. Either way, we're going to be doing something semi-new. Anyway, new for me. But uh, if, we, if I just keep it in the Word, Word doc, you, I'm sure you guys will figure it out. Everybody figured it out last spring. It wasn't, it wasn't that tough. It was a hell of a lot more work for me. And it's a lot more work for me to set it up in Canvas. But... Once I set it set it up, then it'll be be a lot less work. So, any other questions? Questions about what? Anything? Uh, mill square feet. Yes. Or um, sheet goods. I I didn't quite follow. Okay. I okay, kind so, of um, so sheet goods. So we we know what sheet goods are. Yeah. Sheet goods are the plywood, particle boards. Things like that. They're pretty much four by eights. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you can get um, plywoods and and uh, particle board and MBF cores in different sizes. You can get them in five by eights, 
five by tens, five by twelves, four by tens, four by twelves. But generally, um, if you're going to the board store, if you're ordering regular regular plywood, is four by eight, um, yeah. ninety five percent of the time. So, so the square foot's easy, right? Square foot of anything is one size times the other, one side times the other. So four times eight equals thirty two. So every single sheet of plywood is going to be 32 square feet. You know, if it's if it's a four by 10, it's going to be 40 square feet. If it's a five by 12, it's going to be 60 square feet, right? That's not, that's not a hard one for anybody, I hope, right? Five yeah. times 12 equals 60. So plywood sheet goods are priced not by the mill board foot, but by the mill square foot. So the okay. thickness of the the thickness of the plywood, or the thickness of the sheet good means nothing. I mean, other than if you want quarter, you should buy quarter. <laughs> the same thing. But in other words, it doesn't factor into the price. It factors somewhere into the mill square foot price, but it's all sold by the mill square foot. So um, this one's going to be a, a pre-fin maple, and it's going to be it's going to be pricey. It's going to be like thirty-two hundred dollars. A MSF, right? So this plywood, this um, it's three quarter pre fin maple, really good stuff. It's pre finished clear. It's a it's a white maple. It's a void list, no footballs. Really nice stuff, and uh, and it comes in four by eight sheets, which is thirty two square feet, and it costs. $3,200 per MSF, which is per thousand square feet. So how much does a 32 square foot sheet cost? Let's find out how much is a for one square foot. Move the decimal point. One, two, three places. And now what is it? $32 square foot. $3.20. Three dollars. Oh yeah. Right. Decimal points here. One, two, three. Three dollars and twenty. That zero goes away. Three dollars and twenty cents a square foot times thirty-two is zero four six zero zero six nine zero four two. It's one hundred two dollars and forty cents before tax. Not bad, huh? That's right, isn't it? Yeah. So, did that answer your question, Art? Yeah, yeah, I totally got it. Okay, good. Yeah, no square foot, no board foot. No square foot applies to sheet goods, which are sold by the square foot, versus solid stock. And, and, and lumber, which is sold by the board foot. So their thickness really does matter in the price. Thickness, th thickness matters a lot. So any uh, other, any other questions? Any other questions from the peanut gallery? We're gonna move then. I'm gonna go back to the gallery view, okay. So anybody, Noel? Noel, if you work on that, man, do some sample problems for yourself. And like I said, Google it. Check it out. You you need to get that, and I know you will. I know you got it. And uh, any anybody uh -huh. else, Ryder, you're gonna make it in your trail. It did make you jealous, didn't I, Ryder? Yeah, baby. Uh, fireplace, kitchen Pretty island. Sweet. <laughs> I've never seen an island in a motorhome like that. That was crazy. Yeah, you, yeah no, you, same here. You should have seen. Um, we went to the factory. We went to. Uh, to the Winnebago Tobles factory in uh, Shipshawana, in Indiana, where that coach was made. Met the people on the line that made it and, you know, got the factory tour and we toured. Uh, they were just putting the finishing touches on a, on a Winnebago fifth wheel destination. So mine's a mid profile and this is a full profile. Mine's 33 feet. It's 32 foot 11. Uh, this one, this destination is 46 feet. So 13 more feet and a little taller and just very slightly wider. But you, you walk in like you, you know, walk up like four steps 
You walk in and it's got just these giant ceilings and this giant island and the bedroom in the back. So there's this huge bedroom, king size bed, all these built ins on one wall. And then it's where our bedroom is, you step up to this living room with these wraparound um, theater seating and this 70 inch screen TV. It was like unbelievable, man. Probably and probably 120 out, out the door. So not cheap either. But, you know, compared to a class A, like a, a Phaeton a motorhome, you know, a 42 foot motorhome, Phaeton, you pay 500 grand for it now, easy. But uh, yeah, lap of luxury, man. Some of these fifth wheels are just beyond belief, luxurious. Um, you know, commodious with the opposing slides, you get all this room. It's, uh, it's really, it's a, it's a cool way to camp, you know, and it's, uh, you do get the camping experience, we get you know burn fires, or we get that outside room with the awning. We spend a lot of time outside, but at the same token, you can you can make lasagna <laughs> and wash the dishes, which is great, and and go into and get into air conditioned splendor. Oh my God, I love air conditioning. Don't you? So uh, okay, anybody else have any questions about what's going to happen here next week? Yeah, next week, eight o'clock. We should go home, don't you think? Yeah. It's not like you guys I'm have anywhere good. to go. I'm the only one that has to go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got I got some good yes. I didn't get any. No, no. Coach, we want to stay. Let's play, let's run some more drills. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll I'll just check your pipeline. Check Canvas. I, I may put up an announcement. I'll put up an announcement. I'll let you know prior to the test how we're going to do it. So you'll know what to expect. But, you know, look for stuff. Um, everything's going to be on Canvas. I think I screwed up, and I don't think that I have 10-1. Our last class is recording. I think the one I have embedded is the week before, so I think I got to get rid of that and find 10-1 and get it up. So if you want to do that reviewing, but the the Canvas shell modules are great ways to go back and review stuff if you can stomach. Are you going to case that door for us? Soon? I am going to case that door. Yeah, really soon. I got the. I got it all out and I got new casing and I've taken off the old casing and I was I was thinking I was gonna drywall that wall, but there's enough drywall in there. So the short answer is yes. And you've got the long answer before that. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. And like I said, if maybe you weren't listening is I'm also gonna pop the casing off this craftsman style butted door and then we'll I'll do that with you guys too. And maybe um, I'll add a little something to it because you can do there's just so many cute little tricks you can do with casings um, to, to, to do multiple, uh, to do buildups and get some, get some depth of field, you know, really. And, and I'll explain jam extensions. Matter of fact, I might just explain it. No, you know, I, I'll explain jam extensions later, but uh, well, I'll ex really explain the tiny house trim and, and how we're gonna mill the stock. If you guys ever get back in here so we can mill the stock together. And how we'll do jam extensions and, and craftsman style trim. So until then, um, take it easy and um, you know study what you need to and come prepared and be here at six o'clock next Thursday. We'll take a test together and you guys will you know blow through that test and it'll be a it'll be a short night for you. Oh, I, I bet you, be a short night. And and before I let you go, did I tell you about Proctorio? Anybody? Oh, no. oh my good golly. I am going to take a minute and tell you all about Proctorio. And uh, so no one's no one's heard of Proctorio. Well, huh? one of my classes was going to use it, but they canceled using it. <laughs> who, who said that, John? Yeah. Who's who was it? It was a uh, English teacher, but it was it was uh, the summer. Oh my God! So so you know we. Uh, we there was a actually it was an optional training um, during this FRC training. We had to do five weeks of Friday afternoon Zoom training for the accessibility and um, in, what's the other one? Accessibility and inclusivity or whatever the hell it is, right? Um, we had to do these trainings, and one of them was an optional thing on this Proctorio. So I checked it out, and I said, "No way, I'm doing this." And they, they, I had a kind of a tiff with the FRC people because they had it, they said it was optional, but they had it so like you weren't done until you checked it off. But this is what this thing does. 
if I had Proctorio, I could make you guys and gal take a test with Proctorio on. And what Proctorio would do is it, you give it permission, right? It logs onto your computer and it watches you through your camera and it logs your eye blinks. Yeah. The time, how many times you looked away from the screen, if another head appears on the screen, if you took too long to answer a question, it's like big brother. It's, it's the closest thing to big brother I've ever seen. And I am adamantly against it. It's totally 100% opposed. I wouldn't do it on a bet. You couldn't force me to do it ever. You couldn't force me to be in an environment where I, where I had to sub, be subjected to that crap. And I wouldn't subject you guys to it. It just absolutely incenses me. It's like, really? You're kidding me, right? I, I'm going to have to, because, you know, if you're going to cheat, what are you, you going to call cheating even, right? What are you even going to call cheating? I've already told you, go find the answer. If you got to ask somebody, you still had to go find the answer. So you're going to, you learned it. So you didn't know it. Okay. So you didn't know it. So you're not prepared. You didn't know it, but you went and found the answer. So Anyway, that's my take on Proctorio. I will never use it. <laughs> I'm totally opposed to it. Totally opposed to it. So anything else? Anybody else have any more questions? Okay, so look, have a fantastic week. Just take extra good care of yourselves. Be really good to yourselves. Oh, I'll give you another heads up. This is the 8th. Next week is the 15th. And then the 22nd. And then the 29th. So the 29th, I was going to be returning but now I'm not. So I'll be in uh, in Loreto. I'll be in Baja, Baja Mexico uh, on the 29th. We, we got put, put ahead of day. I'm going on a golf trip to uh, Danzante Bay. So you, so I will give you plenty of warning for this, but your your whole class will be on Canvas. So it'll, it'll be a asynchronous class, your first and only asynchronous class with me. But uh, that's what we'll have on the 29th. So woohoo! Yes, only three more weeks, three more sessions, two more sessions until that. So, okay, until then, take really good care of yourselves and be prepared to take a test. Be here at six o'clock, okay, everybody? Got it. All right. I'm good. See, Thank you. See you all then, guys. Have a good yeah. weekend. Be Take careful care. out there. All right? All right. Good night. Later.